today we are going to talk about circuitry of cardiovascular system that how the blood flows through the circuit of cardiovascular system through the vessels of the cardiovascular system already you know that what is the function of the cardiovascular system the function of the cardiovascular system is primarily the function of the cardiovascular system is primarily to transport the nutrients to the tissues and take the waste products from the tissues to the organ of disposal. For example, cardiovascular system is responsible to take the oxygen from the lungs and glucose, amino acid and other nutrients from the gastrointestinal system and distribute them and transport these nutrients to the peripheral tissues. Is that right? And from the peripheral tissue, it should remove the waste products, metabolic waste like carbon dioxide or like uh, urea, creatinine and take the carbon dioxide to the lungs back so that it can be expelled out of the body and of course take other waste products to the kidney so that in the urine other metabolic waste should be expelled from the body. So we can say one primary function of the cardiovascular system and its circuit is that it should move the blood so that blood can carry the nutrients to the tissues and carry away the waste products from the tissues. Number two, that it is also responsible, right, to carry the hormones from the endocrine organs to the, to the target tissues. For example, growth hormone should be taken to the tissues from the anterior pituitary or you can say from posterior pituitary, ADH should be taken to the kidney, right, where antidiuretic hormone should work. Moreover, one more function of the cardiovascular system is to maintain the good pressure within the cardiovascular vessels and system so that blood keep on moving, right? So these are a few major functions. But to understand these functions, first of all, we should discuss the normal circuitry of the cardiovascular system, right? Let's start from the left side of the heart. Suppose here is the left atrium. This is the left atrium and blood from the left atrium goes to the left, yes? ventricle and from the left ventricle blood is going to aorta which is the main outflow vessel. Now again let me repeat it here is left vent left atrium and from the lungs from the lungs oxygenated blood come into left atrium from the left atrium blood moves through the mitral valve what is the name of this valve this is a mitral valve. So from the left atrium blood is moving to the left ventricle through the mitral valve right and healthy mitral valve only allow the movement of blood from left atrium to the left ventricle but it does not allow the reverse movement of the blood from the left ventricle to the left atrium. So once blood has moved from left atrium to the left ventricle and then what really happens that left ventricle starts its contraction and mitral valve closes right and left ventricle keep on contracting until pressure in the left ventricle become very high and it opens the aortic valve what is the name of this valve aortic valve when left ventricle is contracting of course mitral valve is closed and when left ventricle is contracting pressure eventually opens the aortic valve and now blood from the left ventricle will shift to the main outflow vessel which is the aorta. Blood will move to the aorta. Then from the aorta which is the major arterial uh, you can say branch coming from the left ventricle and responsible to supply the blood to the systemic circulation or most of the tissues in the body right. So from the aorta then there are branches coming out and these branches are called arteries and these arteries eventually uh, go into smaller arteries these medium sized arteries and large arteries eventually go into yes smaller arteries and eventually these smaller arteries break down into the smallest branches which are called arterioles right let's suppose that these are the arterioles. Arterioles are the smallest branches of the 
arterial tray. These are called systemic arterial tray. Now from the systemic arterial tray, now what really happens that blood has to, these were the arteri arterial branches going into arterioles. Now these arterioles will eventually supply to the different tissues. For example, that this tissue is, let's suppose this is the skin, right? This is skin. Here I draw one more tissue. Let's suppose this tissue is GIT, intestinal system, right? I draw one more tissue and this tissue to which the blood flow is going, let's suppose this is renal system. We can draw one more tissue of course and that tissue is suppose skeletal system, skeletal muscles and of course related bones, right? And then, okay, rather than the skin, we can put skin down, we can put more important organ here, that is, yes, you can recognize it, this is central nervous system and we can put skin over here, right? Now what I'm showing in this diagram is that from the aorta branches of arterial branches are going to the target tissue to supply the blood flow. Remember aorta and its arterial tree which is called systemic arterial tree. It supplies all the organs in the body except lungs. Is that right? Now what we have seen that there is cerebral blood flow coming here, enteric blood flow coming here, or splanchnic blood flow coming here, renal blood flow coming over here, uh, blood flow to the skeletal muscles and as you can see bones related with that coming here there is cutaneous uh, blood flow over here right and of course we should not forget blood flow has to go to coronary system as well let's suppose i say this is the coronary coronary blood flow which is going to the myocardium right now what we have to learn that after the arterial tree eventually break down into arterioles, arterioles break down into smaller vessels and these very small vessels are called, yes, these are called capillaries. What are these called? Capillaries. So what really happens within the tissue, we can say that arterioles eventually break down into capillaries. So these are the capillary networks, right? which are actually uh, fed by the arterial tree. Is that right? So here are the capillaries. Right? Now, what we really see Here, again, listen, blood was coming from oxygenated blood from the lungs was coming to the left atrium. From there, through the mitral valve, this was going to the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, it was pushed into our systemic arterial tree. In the systemic arterial tree, from the aorta, right, uh, large and smaller arterial branches are going to the tissues and these arterial branches eventually break down into smallest branches which are called arterioles and from the arterioles blood is going into yes what is this capillaries right these capillaries are serving the uh, all these organs by providing the organs with the nutrients and removing their waste products from the capillaries the blood is connected collected out as yes what is it these are the venules and these venules eventually convert into veins right these capillaries they come together and make the venules and venules make eventually yes what they are making these venules are making veins is that right then again these are the venules and venules are making veins and these veins all of them they come together 
and eventually they are draining in the cable system right cable system these veins are eventually draining their blood into inferior vena cava and superior vena cava now blood coming from the veins collect into cable system and from vena cava system this will go to the right heart let's draw the right heart suppose here is the right atrium this is the right atrium and from here this is the right ventricle this is the right ventricle this is the right ventricle right right atrium now what we really see that blood from all these tissues is collected through the veins into the cable system from the cable system it comes into right atrium and from the right atrium i think right atrium deserve to be drawn in a better way this is the right ventricle and this is right atrium and here is the valve which allow the movement of the blood from the right atrium to the right ventricle and this valve is called tricuspid valve this is tricuspid valve and tricuspid valve allow the movement of the blood from the right atrium to the right ventricle and then blood from the right ventricle is pumped into pulmonary artery through this valve and this valve is called pulmonary valve right then blood from the pulmonary valve comes into pulmonary arterial tray blood is coming to the pulmonary arterial tray and once blood come into pulmonary arterial tray now it has to pass through pulmonary circulation let's suppose here is your lung now the blood which is coming to the lungs right here this will break up again into capillaries and these capillaries are called pulmonary capillaries and blood from the pulmonary capillaries will collect into pulmonary vein and blood through the pulmonary vein will eventually come to the back to the right left what is this left atrium right now let me explain this all right what is really there point number one that oxygenated blood from the lungs is coming to the right atrium through the mitral valve is shift to the left sorry left atrium through the mitral valve blood from the left atrium shift to the left ventricle the left ventricle pump the blood through the aortic valve into systemic arterial tree now systemic arterial tree is giving branches to the most of the organs other than the lungs and these arteries progressively make smaller branches the smallest branch of the arteries is called arterioles and then what really happens that arterioles break down into capillaries and capillaries play the major role of exchange right that capillary allow the exchange of the nutrients from the vascular system to the tissues and exchange of metabolic waste from the tissue back to the blood so that metabolic waste should be carried away from the tissues to the cable system right and through the cable system blood come back through the right what is this atrium then through the tricuspid valve it shift to the right ventricle then through the pulmonary valve it shift to the pulmonary what is this yes pulmonary arteries and then it passes through the lungs through pulmonary capillaries right where naturally it loses yes it loses carbon dioxide and it gains and it gains oxygen 
right and this oxygenated blood eventually come to the left side of the heart. This is the basic cardiovascular circuit, right? Now, the circuit is for technical terms, the circuit is divided into two types of circuit, systemic and pulmonary circulation, right? Systemic circulation consists of left heart, systemic circulation consists of point number one, that is left atrium, left ventricle, systemic arteries, then what are these? Arterioles, systemic arterioles and then from the systemic arterioles blood is going to the systemic yes capillaries point number five is systemic capillaries which act as exchange vessels and from the systemic capillary blood is going into systemic venules these are systemic venules then into systemic veins and then what is this cable system systemic cable system right and then it is coming to the right heart. Now starting from here, right, and all this movement up to this point, this is called systemic circulation. So we can say systemic circulation lies between the left heart and the right heart, right? Systemic circulation lies between the left heart and the right heart and pump of the systemic circulation is left heart because left heart has to generate the pressure left ventricle has to generate the pressure to maintain the flow through the systemic circulation back to the right heart so what is systemic circulation systemic circulation primarily consists of its pump that is the left heart and then it consists of systemic arteries like aorta and its branches and then systemic arterioles systemic capillaries systemic venules systemic veins superior and inferior vena cava, right? This was all systemic circulation. Then from the right heart, from the right atrium, right ventricle, which act as a pump of pulmonary circulation. And pulmonary circulation has pulmonary artery, which has ven venous blood coming, right? Which rich in carbon dioxide, pulmonary artery. Then pulmonary circulation has pulmonary capillaries and eventually it has oxygenated blood in pulmonary veins what is this this is pulmonary veins again let me repeat it that from the left heart through all these arteries arterioles capillaries venules veins and cable system this is systemic circulation and from the right heart to pulmonary artery pulmonary capillaries and pulmonary veins this consists of pulmonary circulation is that right? Now, some important features related with this. We'll talk first of all about the pressure in systemic circulation. Then we'll talk about pressure in pulmonary circulation, right?